Hi, welcome to another episode of Woefully Underproduced. Today we're going to take a look at the Stereo Dipole Filter by Steady State Fate. It's a pretty uh, deep module. There's lots of different routing options and modulation options. Um, some interesting controls to think about. But basically, y you have four outputs that could be uh, each a different type of filter independently. So low pass, high pass, and band pass. Um, so you can have four simultaneous outputs of any combination of those uh, filter types, which makes it pretty uh, amazing off the bat. But there's so many things you could do with it. And of course, different ways you could route those four outputs into the rest of your system, etc., etc. So uh, let's do an overview, like a rundown of everything, um, get into some filter sweeps, maybe some pinging, and then I'll try to do like a um, jam that can really utilize the modulation and the outputs. So let's check it out. So let's just start with a brief rundown of the ins and outs and controls and everything. You have one input here and one input here. So there are four filters, but it's best to think of the module in halves. So this half deals with input A, and this half deals with input B. In the middle, we have universal controls that control both filters at the same time. So this one's for resonance, and this one's for frequency. So even if you're just working with one, this knob will affect the offset of the frequency um, for each of them at the same time. So when you're kind of not worried about uh, controlling both of them, you kind of have to set this at a kind of resting state so that you could uh, get more control over the individual filters. But on this side, we have frequency cutoff, we have resonance, and we have the spread of the two different poles. Um, then, but we also have two separate outputs, even for just the one filter. The first output is just a single pole filter, and you can select the state with this switch. So top is high pass, middle is band pass, and at the bottom you have low pass. So you plug in an input here, you take it out here, and it's just a normal filter with resonance and frequency. Then things start getting interesting. So this second output is the dipole output. That means when the uh, filter is outputting here, you get two poles, so two different bumps of resonance, basically. And you could spread them across the frequency spectrum with this knob. So this way, the second pole will deviate towards the higher frequencies, right? And this one obviously sets the root pole, if you want to think of it that way. So here's one of the really, really cool things about this filter and what kind of separates it from the way that the Q-Pass operates. Because both of them, you can get four poles of stereo output. Um, but with these two individual outputs, first of all, you can choose their uh, state f independently. So if you wanted one to be low pass, you could set the other to high pass. So this is true of the QFS as well, because you get the stereo outputs. But with this filter, um, you can choose whether or not you want the single pole filter routed into the uh, dipole filter. So this switch determines whether we're going to be working with these filters in series or in parallel. So that's really, really interesting. If you wanted to have the single pole at a band pass filtering into the dipole at a low pass, you could do that. If you wanted to run them independently, you can do that as well. So not only do you get the different flavors like you would on the outputs of the QPass, you get this opportunity to feed one into the other. You could maybe self-patch the QPass, but that's you wind up with limitations because you only have the two inputs. Here, you know, this works kind of like the uh, 
Morgasmatron from Intelligel. We have two separate inputs where A is also normal to B, like in the Corgasmatron. But uh, ultimately, the routing is, you know, uh, within the single side rather than one side to the other. So with the Corgasmatron, you're talking about routing one filter into the next one, and then you get the crossfade between the two. This is different. This is uh, w a single pole into the dipole, and you have the same exact option on the other side, right? So you can still do that series or parallel, parallel routing with this filter, with this switch, right? So then, on top of all that, as you're uh, feeding these four separate outputs into maybe effects, maybe different channels in stereo, um, you can, can control both filters at the same time with this knob here. And you can control both resonances at the same time with this knob here. So that, that becomes a whole other level. And if that wasn't crazy enough, you also get a mixed output here. So that's five total outputs of filtery goodness in just this one module. So yeah, the routing options become pretty crazy. And then you got the different CV options. So you have a normal FM input here for this filter's frequency. You get a uh, bipolar attenuator for that. Then you have CV for the resonance with an attenuator for that. Then you have uh, a um, spread control uh, CV, so you can modulate the spread. And then finally, you have a one volt per octave input. So that's really cool for you know key tracking the frequency, but also playing the resonance, which does definitely self oscillate. So again, same exact controls on the right side, but then in the middle, you have uh, CV control for the filter, uh, for the frequency cutoff, CV control for the resonance, and then also another one volt per octave input for this, right? So you could feed this thing different sequences at the same time. You could feed it different LFOs at the same time. You could feed it different envelopes at the same time. Uh, the modulation options get pretty wacky uh, in a good way, in the best way, even. So, yeah, it, it's uh, you, it's similar to the QPOS. It's even kind of similar to Three Sisters, uh, where you can get multiple outputs with shared controls. That's what kind of unites these three filters here. Um, but each one is definitely unique from the other and has things that the others can't do. So um, this is a force to be reckoned with. So let's patch it up and listen to it. All right, I figure the first thing we can do is just take a look at how the filter operates, meaning how do these four poles interact with each other? What does that really mean? Well, the best way to think about that uh, is to see it, to look at it. And we could do that when we crank the filter into self-oscillation. So uh, right now I'm taking the mix output of the module, meaning I'm getting all four filters on the one output, and I'm going to crank up the resonance of just the left side first. So now we hear the sine waves, um, and now I'm going to move the spread control. So you see? spreads out that extra pole into different spots. But when you use the frequency knob, like the regular cutoff knob, it'll move both of them at the same time. So now let's bring in the second side, the right side resonance.
so yeah you can get some pretty crazy effects with that um or i mean results where if you tune them up right and make them different intervals or make a chord out of them and then feed it a one volt per octave sequence you know you have some pretty cool uh flexibility as a sound source but yeah, let's see how it works as a filter. Okay, so right now I got a sawtooth coming in from uh, the Polyvox VCO from Harvestman. And we're just gonna check out what it sounds like. Um, I'm using the single pole and low pass mode. Give it a little resonance. A little bit more. So yeah, it's got a nice resonance, um, lots of good harmonics, and that's definitely one thing about the Q-Pass is that the resonance is very, very distinct in terms of its tone and, and timbre. Um, it's less traditional, I would say, and this is more in the realm of what we're expecting out of filter. So Q-Pass has its own flavor in, in spite of the similarities of the two, but um, yeah. I like the way this filter sounds a lot. Let's check out a band pass. One thing I didn't mention at the beginning is that uh, these two knobs here are for driving the input. So um, you get some soft clipping. Um, let's take a listen. So we're back in low pass sawtooth. Yeah, it gives it a nice little burn, but um, it's not too uh, intense, right? Um, it's good for weaker signals, too, to give it that boost. But All right, yeah, let's check out some uh, more interesting patches. So here we're uh, feeding it a just two different gates from the Tempe, which are at a nice little pace here. And so pinging a filter is when you crank up the resonance 
to self oscillation but then back off like a little bit so where it stops oscillating and then you throw some gates or triggers into the audio input and it creates this nice little rhythmic uh, kind of like a low pass gate sound and um, so yeah we can play with all kinds of things now and liquidy um, good way for some interesting percussion but yeah let's patch up something a little bit more complex so that we can get uh, the stereo side of it all right so we got a sequence coming from the dicky tact uh, into the mangrove and into the uh, polybox vcu and those two oscillators are going into the two different inputs of the stereo dipole, taking the dipoles out and panning them. So you should be listening with uh, headphones and uh, each channel left and right has a different delay on it right now. And we got four channels of modulation coming from tides and those are going into the cutoffs and the spread controls with some uh, parameters on tides now. Thank you. 
a single pulse feeding out into the gap, and a single pulse being passed. that's kind of about it for the stereo dipole um if you have any questions or if i missed anything that you want to know about you know leave some comments and i'll try to get to them because i do think i'm going to get into a video that explores all three of these filters because like i said they have some commonalities but some major differences and i love all three of them for sure but yeah stereo dipole by steady safe fate it's a beast check it out